Hey there, and welcome back. Previously, we discussed the spherical harmonic functions, which were the angular part of the spatial separable solution in spherical coordinates, as shown in yellow. This time, we get to dig into the radial part of this equation, as shown in red. And we're going to do so for the case of hydrogen. How cool is this going to be? By the end of this video, you will understand how to find the polynomial functions for the radial solutions given the particular values for N and L. And maybe by now you could start to see the writing on the wall for what's to come next. All right, so in reading this, we want to work out the radial wave functions for the uh, R of 30, 31, and 32 using the recursion formula equation 4.76, and don't bother to normalize them. This has given us flashbacks to the Hermite polynomials of chapter two with the asymptotic behavior and polynomial solutions, as we see is um, put together in this radial configuration where the exponential is the asymptotic form and the polynomial solution gives us everything in the transients. Um, so nonetheless, what we see here that we need to dive into and set our paces about this type of problem is what are all these different labels? Rho here is defined as R over A N, where A is sometimes denoted as A naught, is also known as the Bohr radius, which is a fixed number. There's a lot of fun there. Uh, N is the principal quantum number. We've seen that all the way back from chapter two. And R is the thing of interest here. When expanding, it's just sometimes easier to keep Rho there. And we see here, that we expand in terms of rho with the power of j and uh, unknown coefficients based on the principal number n. And what we're tasked with doing is applying this recursion relation in order to find the coefficients needed for the uh, polynomial so that we can find the radial functions. All right, so we've seen this before. Again, Hermit kind of builds us up and we know that this uh, polynomial set will truncate via the coefficients so we're good there uh, before we dive in though remember there is a companion PDF attached in the description with some of the stuff including uh, some of the graphing parameters I used for the graphs we'll see later please consider supporting the channel however you can subscribe like share and all that other YouTube stuff well uh, but now on to the adventure all right first and foremost for case one we want it R of three and zero, meaning that we want N equals three and L equals zero. This tells us that J can be of degree rho up to the limiting condition of N minus L minus one, which is equal to two. Again, all this is kind of talked about more in the PDF, so feel free to check that out. Here though, the important part is that the rho or the expansion of new rho can only go up to two as seen in the summation. So expand this out. Now what we're tasked with is finding out what C1 is and C2. Uh, noticing that C0 is just going to have to be found via normalization. So we're not worried about that yet. All right, let's dive in. In the case of J equals 0, we get uh, C of 0 plus 1, which gives us the C1 coefficient. And so we plug in 0 in our recursion relation in all the purple spots. We know that for this case, L equals zero, so we plug in L here and here, good to go. And of course, our principal number three stays there. And now all we have to do is simplify this uh, fraction down and see what this uh, coefficient is. All right, easy enough. We get a two and a two, they cancel out, cool. So what we're left with is C1 is equal to negative two C naught, so we have exactly what we need something in terms of the other coefficient cool now for the case of j equals one we get the coefficient of c2 as we see here find this uh you know plug in the appropriate values for one 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 zero zero three repeat the process here though we have to be careful because although the twos cancel that's just a matter of algebra we have a c1 term here and we don't want that so we have to write it in terms of c naught so we just plug in the old result and we see that when doing so, the negatives cancel, wonderful, and we're left with two-thirds C0. Now that we have everything in terms of C0, if we plug these coefficients of C1 and C2 in, 
then we get a common factor of C0, and thus we see that this is the polynomial of degree up to 2 that we're allowed to use for this given energy state, or the principal state. Notice that had we tried for the case of J equals 2, this 2 plus 0 plus 1 minus 3, this numerator would lead to 0, and we don't have a coefficient there. So that is what we mean by truncation, and that's highlighted explicitly in the PDF. It is good to keep track of. All right, on to the uh, configuration now and putting this all together. All right, finally then, what we could say is that the radial for 3 and 0 is equal to 1 over r rho, again, now that we have an L up here, that goes to 0 for this case. So we have rho of 0 plus 1, the e to the negative rho, and then the polynomial, which we just found. So let's go ahead and tidy this up. When we do so, rho goes to 1. We see that here. Our exponential stays put. We have a C0 that we factored out from the uh, new rho polynomial. And this is everything that we just found in a previous step. Let's recall, though, we want this as a function of r, not of rho. So we have to plug in rho over um, n a. And here we know that n is equal to 3 as color-coded with the blue. And we see we get some nice cancellations for this initial state with the r and r. They go bye-bye, easy enough. Um, it would behoove us now to realize that we should write this in terms of r over a because that is what's going to be used in graphing in a lot of these uh, textbooks. So be aware that it's r as a uh, fraction of the Bohr radius, and that just helps to keep things normalized for what we are actually looking for. And you notice that in all terms, even this exponential, we have an r over a. So that's pretty stable to do. Nonetheless, this concludes the r of 3, 0 case, and now we can move on to our next case. All right, so for case two, as you, we expected, n stays the same. So we move on to L equals zero. And if we check the degree amount, just like we did last time, we see that J can only go up to one, meaning that our polynomial goes up to uh, one from zero to one, easy enough. So what we're tasked with now is finding the coefficient of C1, and that's easy to see. And we get that here. Notice in here that row of zero just goes to one. So that's that one there. Easy enough, this polynomial is quick and easy to find. I think we can see that we just need to plug in the respective values and simplify down to C naught. That can become repetitive as we get to higher levels. But nonetheless, let's put this together in the radial configuration. So now that we have the same setup as before, our row of now is one plus one because l equals one so we get a two row here and notice that that compensation is picked that extra degree of row is picked up by the one less degree of row in the polynomial so it's all working out to be the same we have three uh, degree three polynomial at the end of it just in the different format all right nonetheless plug in what row is simplify it down we see that we have a c naught over 9a squared times r, and then a 1 minus 1 over 6, r over a, with the same exponential. Well, we'll notice that this exponential stays put. Cool, easy enough. This coefficient keeps changing, so we just have to be aware of it. And then, as before, we didn't have any r's outside the bracket. Now we do, and we'll continue to see this pattern escalate as we move on to the next case. So let's see what that is. In case three now, we have everything else the same, except L goes to two, and that means that J goes to zero. So easy enough, we're just left with this quick polynomial expansion. C zero, row zero, that gives that goes to one, easy enough. So we're left with C naught. Wonderful, this will make quick work. Now you see that we compensate by putting the L equals two here in the row from the radial configuration, and our polynomial is a C naught. Plug it all in, simplify it down. We see that we get all our cube, or the r cubed from here. And so we have one factor that cancels here and here. Beautiful. We like that. Um, now it's just a matter of keeping it tidy. And we see that we have a r squared term out front with this exponential term and a whole big constant. Um, but, you know, these 
we get the characteristics here, but normalizing these gives us a little more insight onto what they're going to do whenever we combine this with the angular term. So let's check that out. All right, so when we normalize it and we get everything tidied up to where we want, we notice that all of them have an a to the minus three halves, uh, three, yeah, three halves term in it. And this coefficient keeps varying as you might expect as levels go up or polynomial changes, a whole lot goes on. So we do this and notice here that we actually group everything by R of A um, here as well. So this would, doing it this way allows us to keep this a to the negative three halves term constant and or rather keeps it consider consistent from uh from level to level and that'll help us when we're graphing because we can just move it to the other side and not worry about it um that being said we see these look slightly different but now with all the numbers in place we can actually graph these and see what's going on All right, so with a little bit of Python code, you can get some crisp graphs. You could spend, you know, a whole night on figuring out how you want to orient this and stuff. Characteristic here, though, is that our R of 3, 0, as we kind of saw with the spherical harmonics, the zero terms give us some special stuff. So R of 3, 0 is the blue, and it dives straight down and then kind of asymptotes up to a level solution back to zero as we expect r starts up then goes down and asymptotes to zero again all this is expected as we get to larger and larger x and in this case x is r over a here as i stated we're pushing that uh a to the negative three s power over to the other side and then graphing it with the r of nl so pretty cool pretty good graphs um soon enough we'll see how this all ties together with respect to the angular part mixing with the radial part and then that gives us the total solution which again is very special because it's probably the only one that we could find in a closed form so be on the lookout for that in summary you now know how to handle the radial equation for the hydrogen atom via the recursion relation and the main part to take away there is make sure you get your degree restriction correct and then allow the recursion relation to truncate uh, but this is, you know, not too bad, but more will come with this with respect to the, L the Laguerre polynomials very soon, because that is the easiest way to generalize them when we're dealing with a normalized function. Thank you for watching, and until next time, stay curious, happy learning.